Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Patrick LeVar. I'm sharing my journey of learning Blender Octane with you guys. This is one of the videos from my free Blender 101 Octane guide. If you're totally new to Blender Octane, at least the render engine portion, this guide will help you get started. Enough of my jibba jabba, let's get straight into the video. All right, next we're going to look at the opacity slider and basically the power of the opacity slider. Again, number one rule, this is not used for hiding objects out of your scene. If you didn't want something to be visible to the cat uh, to the camera, you will come over here and click on your object properties. And then right here we have this tab camera visibility. I will tab that. And now that will take that away. And, but you can see still, I have the shadows. So if I don't want the shadows and if I don't want the, the visible, you know, the color that's bouncing off of that, I would tick all of these basically off and I can basically get around that, but there's other ways to do that. So that's getting more advanced, but just if you need to hide something from the camera, camera one here, and then turn, take off its shadow, that would be the best way to do that. Okay. So for us, this opacity slider is really powerful. For example, I have this procedural stripe node. So if I plug this into the albedo, this is basically what it's doing. It's making a stripe pattern here and I can control the thickness and stuff like this. This is some of the the procedural nodes that we'll get into later in the video in the uh, course here if i take this and plug this into the opacity now what it does is of course black conceals white reveals so everywhere that the white is if it's, it shows so again that's what's showing right now and if, again if i take the black values and turn them to white then the white they come back so always remember that black conceals white reveals so that is the power of using this opacity slot here again there it is and then with the opacity we can cut holes into things and you can see we can see all the way through all right next we're going to be looking at admission so the quickest way to make something emissive basically admission emission emissive <laughs> emissive um, i typically would just come in here add in a diffuse material once we got that diffuse material go ahead and plug that into the surface and then from here i will literally just press on emission 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 and then we can choose our different types we've got a black body and let me go ahead and also grab the other one here quickly. So since we're talking about that, the switches, you know what, let's just quickly talk. I'll talk about it really quickly. But most of all of these nodes have a utility, like a switch node. And this is literally a great opportunity to show you what it is. If I plug this into the emission, come over here. It literally is what it says it is. It's a switch. Okay. I'm going to plug the black body on the there. And I'm going to plug this one here on the bottom. And I'm going to change the color on this one to something like an orange color. There we go. If I come here and I, my black, well, I'm not going to change my lights for a moment here. Okay, so I have them both plugged into this emission switch node. Now, this is another thing that about the, 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 the lights here, the emission setup. If you notice right now we're on one, we don't see anything. If I turn this over to two, now we see our sphere, which is using the emission here down here below. And it's got an emission power of 100, okay? So that's what we've got going here. We can crank that up to 200 to get it brighter, to get it brighter. Now we do have these other options here, like surface brightness. Like if I tab on that, this is going to be like, no matter what the size of the surface is, we're going to keep this 200% power, right? It, so like, so th this is basically, it's like if you have an LED bulb, it's very small and tiny and you can literally get its output like one watt or whatever it is. And you will, you want it to match that type of intensity this is where you will to you will choose those type of tools like you six surface brightness like okay i don't matter what the surface is i just want it to be this bright okay versus these other ones here keep instance power kind of I, these are more advanced features which i also will get into but i also want you to know that they're here sometimes if you have like a plane and you're not seeing any light if you want light on both sides of the plane double sided so this is emitting light from the inside the normal and the outside so it's emitting on both sides and then if we come back over here and switch back over to number one, we notice we don't see anything where that's where like based on its size, because the black mission in body is acting more like real world. Again, if we took on surface brightness, no matter what size this geometry is, I want you to maintain this 100% emission, right? So that's where like now we're seeing it's fully lit. Unlike here, because of its size, mainly we probably need to crank it up. Maybe we need to go to 1000. Oh, there's 1000. Okay, so maybe 10,000. Again, I don't know the exact scale of this scene because I didn't build this scene. If you typically when you just drop in a light, you should really have no issue. So if I was to delete all of this, come back in here and we'll just go in a black body admission, which I typically use all the time, plug that into admission. And again, I don't see that light so I can tick on surface brightness and have it at 100 
or I can come in here and add in some absurd value, 50,000 watts, right? 50,000 gigawatts. <laughs> so there it is. But keeping surface emission on, I'd rather just go 100, and there it is, or 50 watts, you know, 50 watt bulb, 25 watts bulb. So that is basically how we would get emission. We do have these other options here. If I don't want this, these these light rays i don't want them to appear on anything that has diffuse on them like this diff this this map down here on the floor has diffuse don't be visible on the diffuse now it's not visible right vice versa specular uh roughness different other transmissions so these are all right here where you can turn those off that's pretty much the admission again um in the next the more advanced videos we'll get in exactly breaking these more in down into detail then you got color temperature here which i kind of skipped over so i go to thirty-five thousand kelvin this is based on the kelvin scale which is a real scientific scale for measuring the, the, the intensity of light. And then vice versa, if I kill this one and bring in our emission again, texture emission. And this one is like kind of more similar to the one in, oct uh, in cycles where we can come here and choose in any color, right? We can bring in any color like that and bring, drag that in. And then there is one other option. If I come in here and zero this out, I didn't plan to talk about it in this portion of the video, but I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. Keep surface brightness. Let's knock that down to 50, actually maybe 25. Oh, see, now we're getting different results when we're using the texture admission. Now look at the values. I'm like putting in 10 and it's like still, hang on. There it is. Actually, I had that checked on. Real isn't paying attention. <laughs> There's one other thing we can also add in, which is called a, I rarely use it, a Gaussian spec spectrum. This represents all the true light wave, all the true color within light waves. Again, this really should be for the more advanced video uh, course, but I'm just going to drop it in now and I'll revisit it again. If we come in here, I can dial in any color that's within true real world lighting spectrum. Here's the wavelength of color right here is the wavelength of color the width of that color which we can control here and then the power and the brightness so literally you can dial any real world color value that's there's our ultraviolet right we get all the way down to ultraviolet so very useful node there which i probably should use a lot more which i don't but i think i will Guys, if you enjoyed this and you want to go deeper with Blender Octane in particular, I do have a Blender Octane community. I'm giving a seven day free trial to the community where you can get more access to content like this. Plus, you can get access to the Blender Octane 101 guide as it's being released, as it's being built. And I also have material libraries, databases of nodes and different types of things to help you learn Octane Blender and an engaging community. So if that's something you might be interested in, take a look down seven day free trial. Hey, if you don't like it, then you can just leave. Catch you in the next one. Take a look at the next video in the guide. Peace.